So in these three examples, let's kind of go through the completing the square. Now, again, really, guys, the process of completing the square, what we're trying to achieve is put something in vertex form. Vertex form had that binomial squared. Would you guys agree? And once we know the binomial squared, I transformations, all that kind of stuff was relatively easily. Now, I kind of recognize something here. And typically, when we were dealing with quadratics, we always looked at like factory, right? And hopefully, since I gave you guys those 73 problems, your brain is a little bit trained to automatically look at a trinomial and say, hmm, is this factorable, right? So immediately, I look at this, and is this factorable? Yeah, it's factorable to what? Hey, guess what? That's in vertex form. So literally, just by factoring it, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. It's in vertex form. Now, for the sake of completing the square, let's actually do that to get to this method. But hopefully, you guys will see that just by factoring this one really quickly, I achieved exactly what I needed to achieve. That's why knowing how to factor is so very helpful. Um, but let's go ahead and do the process. So the process that I said I put back up there, okay, is we're going to put parentheses around our first two terms. So what we're trying to achieve here is here we're trying to we ha, we already had a perfect square trinomial. We got lucky. That's really not going to happen. But I did that because that's a, actually what we're trying to achieve every single time when we complete the square. We're trying to create something that we can factor to a binomial squared. This example, I just gave it to you from the beginning. So how do we create a perfect square trinomial every time? What do we do? Second step is to take the middle term, b, divided by 2, and square it. 2 divided by 2 squared is 1. Was that already the term? We already know 1 was in there, right? Then we take that term and we add it inside of the parentheses. Because by adding it inside the parentheses, you are now creating a perfect square trinomial, which we already knew was the answer, right? But again, guys, if you, you know, if I say 5 is equal to 5, you'd say, OK, correct. And then if I say 5 is equal to 5 plus 1, you'd say, no, that's not correct anymore. But if I say 5 is equal to 5 plus 1 minus 1, you'd say, that's now correct again. Agreed? So if you add a 1, you also have to subtract the 1. Now, the only reason why I'm going through this problem, because you're really not going to see many of this, is when you create this parentheses, you just created a perfect square trinomial every single time. So it's always going to be factorable. And we already knew it was factorable to x plus 1 squared. 1 minus 1 is 0, and that's why you got the exact same answer. So. I just went through this whole explanation of completing the square when we already knew the answer by factoring, right? But typically, guys, you're not going to have a problem that's going to be that simple, right? But you should recognize it. Yes? Um, why did you do 2 over 2 squared? Because that is the process of completing the square, is always taking the middle term, dividing it by 2, and then squaring it, OK? So let's look at the next example. This looks like it's factorable, but is it? No. So what I need to do is I need to create a perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is group the first two terms. Okay, Now my middle term is negative 2. So I'm going to have y. Oops, I'm sorry. So now my middle term is negative 2 divided by 2 and square it. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I'm adding the same number in this case, and that's fine. But let me get this out of the way y is equal to x squared minus 2x. I'm going to add it and subtract it. Now again, did I just create a perfect square trinomial that's factorable? Yes. Yeah. It's not the same as this one. It's what? x minus 1 squared, right? Because x minus 1 times x minus 1. The sad part of this the sad part of this, the reason why most students have trouble is they don't they can't factor. That really is the hard part for most students. They just have trouble factoring. But again, guys, it's always going to give you a binomial squared. So you got to think what product multiplied by what product multiplied by itself is going to give you that, which would be x minus one. And then just be careful, negative one minus one is negative two. Is that a lot easier now to find the vertex, the and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, right? So when it's in standard form, converting it to vertex form. 
because otherwise that's not factorable, right? It's not factorable. So that's not fun to be able to figure out the zeros and all that kind of stuff. Now, what about this? This is written as a linear factorization. It's a product of its zeros. Isn't this really easy to find the zeros? Zeros are negative, four, negative 2 and negative 4. But it's not very easy to find the vertex, is it? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this. x squared plus 6x plus 8. <laughs> and then I say, crap, i got to figure out what that middle term is. So now in this case, I know this is not a perfect square trinomial. But what do I do? Take the middle term, b, divide it by 2 and square it. So we're going to take 6, divide it by 2, and square it. 6 divided 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Oh, I'm sorry. Group the first two terms. Right? That's what we want to create a perfect square trinomial on, is the first two terms. So I have y is equal to x squared plus 6x. What do we do with that 9? Add it inside the parentheses. But if you're going to add it inside the parentheses, you have to subtract it outside. Otherwise, you're not going to produce an equivalence equation. Make sure you remember that step. Now, what is this? Is it factorable? I gave it to you on that worksheet. I know I did. So as long as you did that worksheet, then you should be able to factor that. And now is that pretty easy to find the vertex and all the other kind of transformations? Yeah. That's not easy to find the transformations. That's easy to find the zeros, but not the transformations. right? So that's why a lot of times, um, that's why the vertex form or, or creating that binomial squared is going to be helpful for us. Okay. Wow. All right.